Football has filled my life with so many phenomenal memories. I remember being a little skinny five-year-old boy running around in the back garden kicking a ball. I can remember playing my first game for my primary school team in front of a few parents and teachers. And I remember watching England play on the TV and dreaming that one day that could be me. My football career has been full of ecstatic highs sprinkled with some devastating lows, but nothing has filled my heart with more joy than this beautiful game for the last 21 years of my life. Football has shaped me and made me in more ways than you can imagine. It's taken me around the globe to multiple countries across Asia, North America, Europe and Africa. It's shown me different cultures, backgrounds and attitudes. It's shown me how to win with humility and lose with grace. It's shown me that without hard work, talent has no value. It's taught me that sometimes when you give everything you have, it is still not enough. But it's also taught me that there is no challenge too difficult, no setback too big, no goal unattainable. It has taught me to be resilient, disciplined and dedicated. It's a game that has made me cry, laugh, scream and bleed. But above all else, football has allowed me to be me. Today is the day I say goodbye to the game. With the advice of doctors and physiotherapists regarding my long-term knee injury, and after much thought and prayer, I'm announcing my retirement from football. I look back on my career with an immense amount of gratitude and pride. Pride in the accomplishments, all of the domestic trophies, the caps for England and GB, but more than anything else, pride in the way I did things. The early mornings, the late nights, the long car, coach, train and plane journeys, the gruelling pre-season training programmes, the cup final losses, playing through injuries, the blood, the sweat and the tears, not drinking, saying no to parties, the weddings and the family events that I've missed. I did all of these things without wavering and I relished the challenge in giving all that I had to becoming the best I could be, sacrificing what I was for what I would become. And of that, I am proud. It goes without question I did not get anywhere without the help and support of so many people, from sponsors, friends and family, to coaches, managers and physios. There are far too many to name individually, but I am eternally grateful for their guidance, love and support. That being said, there are a few people I want to acknowledge. First of whom is Matt Wood, I don't think myself, Matt, or the Kent FA staff quite knew where football would take me when I first came to training. But it was clear to me after my last season with Kent where I was headed and what I had to do in order to get there. Matt was full of tough love and is the reason for me becoming such a coachable player in my senior career, something I was the opposite of as a teenager. I have some amazing memories of playing for Kent and will always look back with fondness for my teammates and the tremendous coaching staff. Gad, Wood, Harvey, Hopkins and Webster. Charlton Athletic were my first senior side and though I was only there for a year, what a season we had. Winning the English Deaf Football League and the British Deaf Plate. I was surrounded by great coaches and management at Charlton and I'm thankful for their support, Wynn especially. Charlton was also the place I got to know Ryan Marshall the man who properly introduced me to deaf football and his consistent support and encouragement has been of incredible value to me throughout my senior career. Fulham have also been wonderful to me and the place I call my football home. I spent three amazing years there winning the BDF and EDF Cup double and reaching the Champions League semi-finals twice. But it isn't the trophies and success that I remember most about Fulham though more the family I was involved with. My teammates were incredible, the coaching staff were brilliant and the management was simply superb. I truly enjoyed every second of my time at Fulham. And this was largely down to Ayad Saraf, the manager who brought me to the club. 
He fought so hard for me and believed in me when many others didn't. Even when I left to play in the USA, he still had my back and for that I am forever grateful. He is one of the most loyal men I have ever met. I finished my club career at Doncaster this past season and what a season it was. A new challenge, a new squad and we ended up British champions and we reached the final of the Champions League. It wasn't an easy season for myself, a huge amount of travel, the physical pain in my knee and the disappointment in only winning one trophy. But it's still a season I'm honoured to have been a part of and I want to thank Stuart Denmead and Chris Naylor for their leadership and management this year. For all of the joy that club football brings, nothing compares to representing your country and competing against the best the world has to offer. I am so proud of my 13 caps, competing in the World Cup and the Death Olympics, and will never forget the years spent training, travelling and competing with my brothers. In my time with GB and England, there have been a number of coaches and managers. Philip Gardner was the first to call me up to the training squad and was a calm, experienced manager I learnt a great deal from. Peter Woods was the first to give me a cap and believe in my ability to play at that level. And then Dean Humphreys took us to the Deaf Olympics and is currently in charge of the England squad also. His belief and passion for the game is something I will truly miss. Last but not least is Mark Saunderson. Mark was my coach at Fulham and GB. We have shouted at each other, laughed with each other and challenged each other. But I'm so thankful for his patience, expertise and guidance. I have some brilliant memories of all of these guys and so many others. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I also want to thank, above all else, my family. Their support, love and commitment to ensuring I was able to follow my dream for so many years. It's been a tremendous sacrifice on their part, but a huge blessing to me and something I can't thank them enough for. 21 years ago, I was just a little boy playing in the back garden with a huge dream. Over two decades later, I played in front of tens of thousands, traveled the world, and I've achieved that dream. Dream big, work hard, stay humble.